an infinite sheet of charge oriented perpendicular to the x-axis okay passes through x equals zero it has a surface charge density of negative four microcoulombs per meter squared a thick infinite conducting slab right there also oriented perpendicular to the x-axis occupies a region between 2.1 and 4.9 centimeters conducting slab has a net charge per unit area of 76 microcoulombs per square meter okay and then the questions are we want to find the electric field at that point and then we want to find the um, surface charge density at A, surface charge density at B. So the first couple of things to think about here is there's we know it's a uh, infinite conducting slab and what that means is we can use Gauss's law. So Gauss's law is something along the lines of electric flux equals a surface integral across a closed surface of electric field dot dA. Long story short, you do this for an infinite slab and you basically will get the same answer every time. And you can memorize that the electric field due to a infinite plane, the magnitude, is going to be the electric field, um, is going to be the surface charge density over two epsilon naught. And one of the key things to think about this is that it's um, independent of distance from the surface. And you can kind of intuitively see how that makes sense. So if you use red, so you look at each point here, this is gonna be, I'm gonna do a point over here because it's positive. Each point is gonna have an electric field going out in every direction. Well, when you have something like this, then you have a whole bunch of them lined up, everything's gonna end up canceling except for the horizontal components. And if you think about over here, well, this is further away, but this is closer. The close one, it's gonna have more impact by the close charges, but the charges that are far away are gonna have a relatively small, I guess, horizontal perpendicular impact. And so you basically have a, when you have a point that's far away, you're gonna have more impact from charges that are more distant, but when you're close, you're going to have more impact from the charges that are close due to this, um, I guess that'd be sine of theta, if that's theta, and that'd be sine of theta. That's the idea, it's the trigonometry thing. Long story short, you do the math, and a you're going to have basically the same charge um, the whole distance away. And the idea is this is going to be an infinite plane here. Um, this is one of the reasons why parallel plate capacitors work so well. So that's enough background there. This is the equation we're going to use, which is derived using Gauss's law. And so now we're going to find the electric field at point P. So to start by doing this, I'm going to draw the electric field lines. So a negative charge is going to be a sink, and a positive charge is going to be a source. So when I draw this, this is going to be sigma 1 is negative right here. And so I'm going to draw electric field lines going like this into the infinite plane. And I'll extend these a little bit so we can see what they are at point P. And these are constant throughout the whole region here because the electric field doesn't diminish with distance when you have an infinite parallel plate. You might be like, well, that seems unreal unrealistic. Well, yes, but so are infinite planes. So then we have this, which has a net charge of, bum, bum, it's a conductor, and it has a net charge of 76. So 76 being positive, so it's going to go this way. It's going to be a source. Whoop. Like so. And if we look at point P right here, right here, we can see that the electric field lines oppose each other. For this plane, going to the left, because it's a sink, and for the uh, conductor slab they're going to the right because it's a source they oppose each other so we're going to say the electric field total equals and it's sigma over two epsilon naught so that's going to be sigma i'm going to call this b because this is the one that i'm going to say is positive minus sigma alpha over two epsilon naught now it really wouldn't be, they'd both really be added to each other, but sigma a is negative, so I just move the negative 
out into a subtraction sign. So do a little bit more math here. So we have two, nope, I'm gonna do it this way. Uh, one over two epsilon naught, sigma b minus sigma a. Hmm, that worked well. And so I'm gonna call this 76 and four. So this is gonna be equals one over two epsilon naught, 76 minus four, and this is micro coulombs per square meter. Simplify that out a little bit. So we're gonna get 72, 72 divided by two is gonna be 36. So we have 36 divided by epsilon naught, and I'm gonna call this 10 to the negative six coulombs per meter squared, just to get a um, everything into coulombs. Then epsilon naught is, let's see, 36 times 10 to the negative six. And at this point, I'm gonna drop using um, units, they're still there, but I don't want to deal with farads and it's just, eh, it'll work out. Times 10 to the negative 12th. Doing a little bit of algebra here. This is the same as 10 to the 12th on the top. 10 to the minus six, 10, and 10 to the 12th becomes 10 to the sixth. And so we are left with 36 divided by 8.85. Get the calculator. Oop, calculator, 36 divided by 8.85, and we have 4.068. 4.068 times 10, that's a terrible eight, I know. I'm gonna redo it. Oop, times 10 to the six, and this would be measured in, since we're doing electric field, I think Newtons per Coulomb, I think Newtons per Coulomb. Newtons per Coulomb. So from here, the answer for the first point is the electric field at point P will be 4.068 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb in the positive x direction. Okay, now I'm going to erase this real quick, clear up the board. The second question is, what's the uh, surface charge density at A, what's the surface charge density at B? And so this is a conductor, specifically a thick conductor, which means that there'll be the charges will can move within the um, conductor. So here we have a negative net. So I'm just going to write this as a whole bunch of negatives. Not that many negatives because it's tedious. There we go. So what that's going to do is it's going to attract positives over here. You might be like, well, how many positives does it attract? Um, this creates a uniform. Uh, field that doesn't diminish with distance because it's an infinite plane and so it'll be an equal number of these negative charges will, will attract an equal number of positive charges here which means that there's going to be positive charges over there so you could think of it then as repelling the negative charges over to this side and since this is a 76 microcoulomb net 76 microcoulomb when we have the positive charges over here, we're gonna have 76 plus four, which will be 80 microcoulombs per meter squared, per meter squared. And on this side, you're gonna have negative, so it'll be 72 microcoulombs per meter squared. Another more intuitive way, or just an intuitive way of looking at that, blue. So we have, the um, electric field at this point, pointing this direction due to the negative field, uh, due to the negatively charged infinite plane. Um, draw it a little bit bigger, there we go. But on the positive, we have, and it actually extends from the, it's electrically neutral in the middle, so it's actually more like this, there we go. Since this is a source in the center, providing electric fields going out, um, these are going to be constructively added together on between the two. So that makes sense that we have a 80 microcoulombs per meter square there, a bigger number, but these are going to destructively work together or combine on the outside here. And that kind of makes sense by the electric fields going in opposite directions here. So then we'd have 72 microcoulombs per meter squared here. So to recap, um, the formula that you should memorize is electric field is surface charge density over two epsilon naught right here. Um, 
you can, and then with a infinite plane, it doesn't diminish with distance because there's no distance involved here. And it's all horizontal. And then you can just superimpose them on top of each other to get answers. And that's how we got an answer of 4 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb as the field at P. Then you superimpose them and you can look at how the fields interact like this. So A would be 80 and B would be 72 microcoulombs per meter squared. So I hope that helped you with the concept. I will see you next time.